Fighting, something that every dude thinks they're good at until they actually do it and they get out of breath in the first two swings. Coming from the land of snow and physical confrontation, I've seen several games of fisticuffs play out before my eyes. And I can confidently say, as someone who has had their ass kicked several times, fighting is just not for me. I'm more of a 1v1 me in Rocket League kind of guy, not a 1v1 me in the alley behind roses kind of guy. But for some reason, historically, there has always been an innate need for humans to engage in physical combat. When I say humans, I mean 16 to 25 year old dudes who didn't get enough love from their father. And this need eventually manifests into getting into combat sports. Whether that be watching it from home or rolling on a mat with a guy you met 20 seconds ago and you will find out what his balls smell like. But as a Sigma male soy boy who enjoys nothing more than sitting down and remaining stationary, I just have one question for all fighting sports, which is, um, why? To start off, let's take a gander at all the reasons why fighting sports and just fighting in general confuses the shit out of me. I took the time to jot down all my thoughts about fighting sports and fighting in general, and I'm gonna present those to you now despite the fact that someone in the comments is going to call me a fat pussy. They're gonna call me a fat pussy and I can't do anything about that, but if I get ahead of it, it's gonna really help my self-esteem. Number one, and the greatest question of all time, why do you want to get hit? Get, that shit sucks, dude. There is not one spot on my soft, pasty body that can adequately take a punch. It seems somehow that every part of my body is the worst part of my body to get hit. A swift punch to the gut, I fall down and immediately throw up and probably piss blood, so that's no fun. A leg shot? Listen, a swift kick to the shins will make someone find God again, and, and a, a well-placed uh, dead leg is gonna make me wanna renounce the faith that I just found. Getting punched in the nose? Have you ever been punched in the nose? It is the worst thing. Just ask your friend to lightly bop you in the face when Whenever it's cold outside and it, it, you're, you, you have no choice but to start crying. Best case scenario, I take a lights out shot to the chin and just get knocked out because that way I don't have to feel all the pain that's about to happen to my body. Number two, it is really easy to kill somebody. Like, it's, it's shockingly, if you punch a guy the wrong way, you can easily accidentally kill a man. Let me lay out the scene for you. You're sitting at the bar enjoying a nice cosmopolitan, unwinding after a long day of sending one email. A guy walks up to you and begins talking shit about your choice of beverage. You try to ignore him, but he keeps pestering you, and eventually he puts his hands on your person. At this point, you have enough righteous anger and the legal right to defend yourself, so you lay a perfect right hook right on his chin and he collapses on the floor. The whole bar erupts into applause and cheering, the ladies are lining up to give you their numbers, and you have free drinks for the rest of the night because that's what heroes deserve. Except, oops, uh-oh, uh, Mr. Chatty hit his head on a bar stool on the way down and now he's having a seizure on the floor. Whoopsie daisy. The paramedics did their best, but due to severe brain damage, he died very shortly after arriving at the ER. This happens all the time. I did the math and it's definitely not correct, but even lowering the numbers to make the math more accurate, five to 10% chance that you kill someone in a fist fight. Five, that, that is uh, sh the terrifying. Now you're serving 20 to life for accidental manslaughter because you couldn't handle a little razzing about your Cosmo. It's just really, it's a really bad idea. Number three, off topic but still on topic, what the fuck is with all the belts? Why, why are there so many belts involved with fighting? When you win, you get a belt. When you rank up, you get a belt. There's belts for martial arts and you have to go through all the colors before you get to the black belt. And even when you get to the black belt, there's like blackier belts that show how much of a black belt you actually have. But does any other sport in the world fuck with belts as hard as fighting sports? Like in hockey, you have the cup and in every other sport, you have a trophy. Why, did, why do they have belts? Is it so you can wear it and show people how tough you are while still having the full mobility to beat the shit out of somebody? Because that UFC championship belt looks fucking heavy. But I guess if you're the champ, that doesn't really matter. I mean, Jesus Christ, Mike Tyson currently could wear a lead vest that they give you at the dentist when they take x-rays and still turn my face into bone soup, so whatever. And finally, number four, why is it so expensive to watch fight sports? Why, what is that racket? I don't have a lot to say about this, but I remember in college I was invited to a fight party and I just wanted to drink with my boys, but they asked me for $20 and there was like five people going. It was like 150 bucks to watch something on TV. What the fuck is that? No other sport does that, and also fighting has one of the worst returns on investment in terms of watching something. Like the World Series, that's gonna go nine innings, maybe more, but with a fight, it could end in five seconds, and you spend $120 for that. You, a clip that you're gonna see on Twitter in two hours. It's just a weird world to be involved in. It's why don't we all just cuddle? Just cuddling makes everything better. I don't have a way to end this segment. Like, comment, and subscribe. Share this video with your friend who doesn't, who, who likes fight sports. Okay. So if you're like me and you don't know your ass from your elbow when it comes to fighting, it's important to be able to identify what the hell's going on when a guy walks up to you and he's strangely low to the ground, but aggressive. So I have Googled some pro fighting styles and noted down their attributes. That way, when you're in a sticky situation, you'll be able to identify and defend yourself properly. I will be discussing all these fighting styles and also ranking your ability to defend against them as a regular Joe with no fighting capabilities whatsoever. Number one is boxing. This is the classic fighting form that you'll see in like a bar fight or just a, a street disagreement. It only happens standing up and there's not a lot 
lot of kicking the ball, so you only have to focus on the fists. You can tell someone is a trained boxer by their efficient stance and their ability to defend their squishy bits with their hands and also their movement. So as a regular Joe, your odds of winning this fight are slim to none. So once you see someone square up in a really efficient pose, just tell them that you're a little pissed baby and you don't want to do any of this, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry daddy. That's your best chance. And then we have Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, also known as BJJ, a suddenly common fighting style that has been taken on by UFC tryhard fans. Almost the exact opposite of boxing, where the focus is more to take things to the ground where punching and strangling can commence. When the fight begins, you'll notice these dudes start creeping up towards you like one of those silly little spiders that's doing a mating dance. But do not take this as an act of flirtation, because if this guy gets you as low as he is, he's going to twist you into an Auntie Anne's pretzel and dip you in mustard. Once again, your chances of survival in this situation are literally zero, so I would suggest just trying to get as low as he does, but do a little rhythm to it so you're initiating a dance battle. That way he'll just assume you're mentally ill or slow or something and he'll feel bad about beating you up. It's all about pity in these situations. And then we have Krav Maga, which is a self-defense oriented style of fighting that hails from Israel. This one's a lot more about not getting beat up rather than beating someone else up, if that makes sense. Known for its straightforward, instinctive techniques that are like malleable in real hand-to-hand -hand combat. That way it's extremely useful in sudden fights because you know how to handle yourself when someone shows up with some crazy bullshit like BJJ. I would suggest a regular Joe learns how to do this, but uh, that being said, if another guy knows how to do this and you get in a fight with them, you're, it's not gonna work. It's, you're gonna get your ass kicked. I think all of these, a regular guy's gonna get his ass kicked. I don't know much about this fighting style, but I do know all the pictures on Google where this exact situation, that looks like it sucks. All right, I'm gonna piss through the rest of these because there are more fighting styles than colors of M&Ms and that seems incorrect. Kickboxing, it's like boxing, but you're also allowed to kick. So just imagine you getting knocked out and falling to the ground. Imagine how many kicks to the throat you're gonna get in that time. Not good, you're gonna lose. Mai Tai, a combat style from Thailand, is also known as the art of eight limbs. So you can imagine how badly you're gonna get beat up. Characterized by its striking techniques of various parts of the bodies, like your fists, shins, elbows, whatever the hell you could hurt somebody with. Mai Tai to me seems to be really about rapid onset damage, just as much damage as I can possibly put on you. So like out of all of these, you're really gonna get fucked up. Hospitalization. Your body will become a broken bone beanbag if you get into a fight with one of these guys. Just run away. Also, quick note, I know it's pronounced Muay Thai. I just kept saying it wrong for some goddamn reason. I have no idea. So sorry. And then we have Aikido, which uh, is, uh, I think it's made up. It's known for taking an opponent's energy and using it against them. So like someone charges at you and you kind of like flip them over. And a lot of people say it's a bullshit martial art and I kind of agree with them. And I, I don't have any authority in the situation, but I mean, Steven Seagal is a seventh level black belt in this. Steven Seagal, known for being in shape. I mean, just take a look at this clip and tell me what you think. So, you know, seems like magic, but I'd still somehow get my ass kicked. And finally, we have Tai Chi which is the yoga of fighting style. Slow movement and flowing actions. It's more about like the mental and physical benefits of it than actual self-defense. So the odds of winning against someone using the style would be high, but then you have to remember that this person is taking care of their mind and body and you are so out of shape, it doesn't even matter. So you'll still get your ass kicked. It's not worth fighting, just give up. I gotta stop projecting in my videos because obviously I have some shit to work out. So I have made it clear that I think fighting and fighting sports are insane. It seems to just be a base human impulse that some people just need to work out of their system. And when something of this caliber goes unchecked, the human race will make up the craziest shit to satiate their bloodlust. So here's a list of the most out-of-pocket combat sports I have found from around the world. Up first we have shock fighting. It's exactly what you think it is. Two people with a bloodlust enter a ring and they just engage in normal combat except they have tasers on their fists. This is something I would come up with in seventh grade when I didn't have a fully formed brain, but luckily people out there have more money and time than me. The winner is declared by submission or shock out, which is when someone gets so many volts to their brain that they fall to the ground and piss their pants. Then we have shin kicking, which is a real sport. And once again, it's exactly what it sounds like. This sport back, this store, this sport bakes, Jesus Christ. This sport dates back to the 1600s when little English boys on the, the countryside of Cotswolds were kicking each other in the shins. I don't know. I don't know. The rules are pretty simple. You find a bunch of straw and shove it down your pants and then you and a combatant just kick each other in the shins back and forth until one of you falls down. Then we have X arm, which is a, my favorite. I wish I could find live footage of this. Take a classic arm wrestling match and just make it evil and you have X arm. The two guys join their arms and then they tie each other by the waist and then it's no holds barred. They're doing head butts, they're punching, they're kicking. They're just trying to get the other person to fucking give up. Then we have toe wrestling. I don't, I'll, whatever. It's what it sounds like. It's like thumb wrestling both toes and I'm pretty sure it's a fetish thing. So I'm just gonna move right past. And then finally something I can get behind which is professional cardboard tube fighting. 
something I've always wanted since I was a little kid. It's a full league where fighters get those long things that like wrapping paper comes in and just beat the shit out of each other. Winner is the last team with intact tubes, so it's more about doing damage to the tubes than it is about the other person, but it's, you know, it's gentle and it's fun and it's like the teddy bear of fights. It's like those fights where people dress up in full armor and beat the shit out of each other, but that's like, that, that's this. That's scary, I don't wanna do that. Well, I wanna do the fights with the tubes. Maybe I am a pussy. Like, comment, and subscribe. New videos every Saturday.